Hey, today I'm going to be discussing six different WebStorm plugins that I use for my React apps. Maybe you've just downloaded WebStorm and you're wondering how to get the best looking theme. I'll discuss that in other formatting plugins like Prettier and Syntax Highlighting for styled components and GraphQL. If you're new to React and WebStorm and you want to build a full project from start to finish, you can enroll in our free course on our website. Check the link in the description to access over 90 minutes of step-by-step -step instructional training with React for free. Okay, so I'm here off of a fresh Create React app install, and you can see here I have the Monokai theme for my JavaScript and my IDE, which I think is the default theme for WebStorm. So with that, I'm gonna go and check out some of our plugins. So if we go to WebStorm, we go to Preferences, and then we go down here, we could see one of the top level items is called Plugins. So you're gonna click on that, and you can see we have two tabs up here. The first one that we're gonna talk about is called Installed, so this one just shows the plugins that you already have installed. As you can see, we have 58 plugins. So with over 50 plugins already bundled into your web storm, there's really, you can get by really far with just, you know, the default plugins. So we are going to end up talking about Prettier, one of the default ones that comes with this. So moving over to the Marketplace tab, this is where we can explore and install new plugins. So we're going to start with Material Theme UI. This is my favorite UI theme because I believe it dramatically improves the UI of WebStorm. Uh, what's also really important is that you get about a dozen new themes with this one plugin, which initially surprised me. Also, you get themes for the editor itself in addition to themes for specific languages. So if you wanted one theme for the WebStorm UI and one theme for React development, you could do that. And so with that, we're gonna go ahead and click install on this plugin. So that's gonna install and ask me to restart my IDE. So I'm gonna go ahead and click restart. When I restart, I get this wizard that allows me to select a material UI theme. So you can see here we have Oceanic on the left. I like this theme. We have Darker on the right. I'm gonna just zoom out here. So we have Pale Night on the left. This is uh, my personal favorite. It's a purpley pink kind of a theme. On the right, we have Lighter. On the left, Deep Ocean. And then on the right, Monokai. Monokai is probably going to be the best for most people because it's uh, used in sublime text. Then we have Dracula on the left, Arc Dark on the right, just more neutral purple palette. One Dark on the left, Solarized Dark, Solarized Light, and GitHub. So I'm going to choose Pale Night and I'm going to just continue on. Now, here you have contrast selection. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as is don't really need a high contrast layout. So I'm just gonna go next. This is the accent color. So this is just a kind of global accent color. It's the checkbox color here you could see. I'm just gonna recommend leaving that as is. And we're just gonna hit finish. All right, so now we're running our Create React app with our new Material UI theme, which we could see here on the bottom Material Pale Night. Now, if we double click on this Pale Night down here, we could see we open up the Material UI settings in our WebStorm settings dialog. And so here you could see we have our selected theme up here. We can change this if we want. So let's go ahead and change it to Monokai. And we're gonna go ahead and click apply. And then we could just see if we like that. So that's Monokai. And then we could go down here, change to Oceanic. Also hit apply. There's Oceanic. And yeah, so we're gonna leave it on Pale Night. We're gonna click apply. And then down here is where you could see the tab height. So here we could see that if you think the tabs are too tall, you can change the height of these here. So let's say we want 20 pixel tab heights, click apply, and then we could see the tabs are looking a little better. So we're gonna click okay here to save the settings. Another thing that you might notice is that the lines are spaced out more after this theme. So that is in the font overrides. You can see here that the font is being overridden in the color scheme font. And so this color scheme font is, is being applied here. So you could see that their line spacing is a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's 1.5 spacing basically. Uh, I don't know if the default, I don't remember what the default is, but let's say if you want less spacing between lines, you could set that. And then you could also increase the font size or do whatever else you want. So, all right, so let's say if you wanted a different theme just for JavaScript. So if you go here, you could search for JavaScript and you can click here on the color scheme. You could see that we have Material Pale Night 
as the scheme for JavaScript. So you could set this, let's say you wanted Oceanic for JavaScript. So if we set that, click apply. So now you can see we have the Pale Knight uh, as the main WebStorm UI, and then we have um, the Oceanic theme inside of like our console and our JavaScript editor. So in case you wanted to mix and match, like you could set maybe a darker theme here, or you could do, yeah, I don't have any great recommendations for this. Let's say if you wanted a darker theme in here. So that doesn't look too bad. So this was, you know, a darker theme or more contrast theme inside here just to mix it up. So that's kind of a way you can mix and match if you want to. Now, the question is, if we change our material UI theme back, does that set our values? And it does. So we changed our theme back to Monokai Pro and it changed the editor's text scheme. So if we go back here again and choose, let's say, Pale Knight, click apply, it's going to overwrite the previous time that we had a different setting in there. So this is us back to Pale Knight and we're just gonna leave it at that. Okay, let's talk about some other plugins. So the Prettier plugin is already installed, but it's not being applied um, unless you specifically trigger it through either the command in WebStorm or by setting up a file watcher. So let's just say we have this JavaScript here that we're writing. If we, let's say, mess up some of the indenting. Oh, wow. If you saw that, it did flicker in back my old theme there for a second. So if we highlight this and then we select, we right click and we select reformat with prettier, you could see that will reformat the text with prettier. Now, if you indent a little bit, choose the command option shift P on Mac, that does prettier reformat. That's the keyboard shortcut for prettier reformatting. So to use the prettier file watcher, we actually need to install prettier in our directory here. So if we go npm i prettier dash capital D, what this is going to do is install prettier inside of the node modules here. So you might be wondering why we're doing this. And that's just because it is not easy to know where the WebStorm prettier command is. It could be different on Windows or Mac. So this is just making it easier to set up the file watcher. So while that's installing, let's go ahead and check the file watchers here. So if we go to our preferences again and we search for file watcher, you can see we have no file watchers configured. So if we go to add, we're going to add in a prettier file watcher. And then here we could see we have JavaScript. We're going to go and change that to React JSX, which is right above JavaScript. So we select that. So we're going to try recently changed files. Now this is where our prettier command is going to be installed once it's done inside of our project directory. So if you install it locally here in your development environment, you don't have to change this. So it's the default, it's just easier. And also if you're working with multiple projects, you might accidentally have a different prettier version installed globally. So you wanna have the prettier that's inside of your local project. So we said, okay. And we're just gonna leave all these other parameters as they are. You can add in arguments to the prettier command if you want a, a different setting to be set, but we're just gonna leave that as is. So we say, okay. And okay, so that's our JSX prettier. We're gonna add in another prettier for regular JavaScript now. And we're just gonna change this again to recently changed files. And we're gonna leave this as is. So we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna click okay there. Now we're just gonna wait. All right, so prettier is installed. So now let's see if our file watcher correctly uses prettier. So if we change some indents here again, we hit save, you can see that the prettier watcher does work. The next plugin I'm gonna talk about is called Styled Components. So if you haven't used Styled Components before, you can install that with mpmi dash dash save styled dash components. So we're installing Styled Components for our app. And while we're doing this, we're gonna install the Styled Components plugin. So this is kind of a newer CSS in JavaScript library where you can style React components pretty easily. So once again, we're gonna go here to our plugins and then we're gonna search the marketplace for styled-components. And we're gonna click install here. It's gonna ask us to restart our IDE, which we can do. Since we've finished installing styled components, we're gonna restart our IDE. 
All right, so now we should have syntax highlighting for styled components. So first we have to actually import styled components. So we're just gonna say import styled from style dash components. And then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say const styled div equals style dot div. And here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say color blue. So that's how you create a styled component. We're gonna copy this component. We're gonna use it over here inside of our app. So we're just gonna say here. Okay, so we don't actually need to use that style component. So now you could see that the syntax for style components is kicking in. So you could see that we can actually select colors inside of this. So you couldn't do this before, so that's pretty cool. And then also each of the CSS properties are being uh, syntactically colored in a, in a way that's uh, more like our HTML down here. So. That's great. Um, I could show you another more advanced example. So we could say, let's say we have a width that's dynamic. So we can go ahead in here and we can just say, let's say we have a, a width that's inside of this prop. So let's just say, yeah, let's say width. And then over here, let's just say width. And then this is in pixels. And then we close it off like that. So this could be some kind of hook that you add in here from styled components or a property. So as you could see, it's styling this function here better. So it looks a little nicer than the default. So you can go ahead and turn off styled components just to show you what it would look like normally. So to disable a plugin, we're gonna go here. We're just gonna uncheck this. So now we've disabled that and we're gonna click apply or click okay. So it's gonna to ask to restart. Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to restart this just to see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the styled components not enabled. So you could see that, you know, just the color and the property are the same color. So it's a slight advantage over the regular styled component syntax. All right, the next example I'm gonna show you is definitely not necessary and something I'm still playing around with, but if you search for rainbow, in the marketplace, we'll see rainbow brackets. So we can install this and we restart the IDE. So if you've ever noticed nested components having the same colored brackets around them, it might look a little confusing. So what this plugin does is it colors the brackets in a rainbow fashion. So it's pretty cool to actually use. And okay, so this is what rainbow brackets looks like. Now you can see that the rainbow brackets color really doesn't match too well with our current theme. So you can see here it adds the colors at the ends of the carrots to the HTML elements. So uh, nested HTML elements have different color carrots around them. So that could be useful for seeing different child elements more easily. Going up here, it also does the same thing for the functions and brackets around here. So it see, we'll change the color slightly. So we could, I think, change that if we go to preferences, go to rainbow brackets, go here to rainbow brackets, color scheme. So here you could see it does change it to these colors. So if you click apply colors of round for all brackets, it'll just set that color scheme for all your brackets. And then now you could see my special bracket palette is being applied. So this is my bracket palette now. So I think that's pretty cool. So this is a more of a green to purple kind of a color palette. Okay, and then the last few themes that, or the last few plugins that I think you might need, .env and the GraphQL plugins. So .env file allows you to, you know, easily pull in environment variables and have syntax highlighting in your .env file. So environment variables completion. So basically it just looks in that file and then you can have autocomplete on your environment variables, which is pretty useful if you're working in a project with a lot of environment variables. The next one is GraphQL. So this is not bundled yet within WebStorm, I don't think. So pretty useful for just GraphQL syntax highlighting and template literals in JavaScript. So definitely something that you need if you're working with GraphQL. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.